We were about to round off the year with an epic trip to South America and our first stop was Argentine capital Buenos Aires. We'd flown direct from London with Norwegian and at 14 hours it was the longest flight I'd ever taken. I was there with my then girlfriend Gab and although we'd had a long trip we'd be on a quick turnaround as that evening we had something special planned, well at least from my perspective anyway. Buenos Aires is one of the world's biggest footballing cities and its two main football clubs are River Plate and Boca Juniors. I would say the more iconic of the two is Boca and fortuitously they were playing the day we arrived in the city. I had to go and after a quick nap we headed out to get some food and to buy shirts to wear for the game. Boca Juniors tickets are almost impossible to come by unless you book through a tour company and that's exactly what we did. We went through the reputable landing pad BA and tickets are sold in packages. We went with the cheapest which was $165 each which is roughly £130 and along with our ticket we got food and beer at this restaurant and transport to and from the game with a local guide. After filling up on Kilmes pizza and empanadas we were prepared for the famous Argentine celebration when the home side scores. <laughs> we shout it out loud, right? Because we are waiting for the goal to come. So I will only do it once if you want to record it. <laughs> 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 it's all something you know. <laughs> We then boarded our minibus and it was off to La Bombonera, the better known name of Estadio Alberto J. Armando which translates into English as the chocolate box owing to its unusual shape. This was somewhere I'd wanted to come for a long time as it is one of the most iconic venues in world sport. Being from Europe it's hardly a short hop to get there. The approach to the stadium was incredible and it was great to feel a match day buzz all around us. As we were entering the stadium, crowds gathered outside for the arrival of club legend and now second vice president, Juan Roman Riquelme, who soon made an appearance. Boca Juniors are one of the most decorated clubs in South America, with 34 league titles in total and 6 Copa Libertadores, the continent's answer to the Champions League. The famous blue and gold colours of their home strip are mirrored in the stadium seats and we were about to take ours ready for the game. The opposition was Argentinos Juniors, not a household name but they are the club where a certain Diego Maradona started his career and they do have a Libertadores title of their own which they won in 1985. At the time both clubs occupied the top two spots in the league so there was something riding on this. However it wasn't an all time classic although we did get to celebrate as Boca scored the opener half an hour in. <laughs> But unfortunately the visitors equalised in the second half so Boca couldn't get the win and then one of their players was sent off at the end for dissent so the crowd weren't too happy at the full time whistle. It's just finished 1-1 at La Bombonera, Boca Juniors, Argentinos Juniors, wasn't the greatest of games but I mean just look at this place, it's just absolutely incredible. One of the most iconic football stadiums in the world, one of the best footballing experiences I've ever had. I'm kind of sad to go, but I uh, highly recommend it. I'd had an amazing time, so the red card didn't dampen my spirits. I got to visit what I consider to be the finest footballing stadium on the planet, see the home team score and complete a life goal, although I do want to go back at some point to watch them contest the Super Classico with River. That brought to an end an eventful first day in Argentina, but there is much more to come from our trip, so make sure you stay tuned and subscribe so that you're notified when the next one goes live. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.